my name is Ruhina Tasmin, and uh, my teammate here is Jada Williams. And our project is about serving providers about their experience with autism. And our ultimate goal is to make an autism friendly hospital initiative. So this is the Lend Disclosure. Uh, as we all know that Lend is supported by the Maternal and Child Health Bureau of the Health Resources and Services Administration. And the information contents and conclusions are based on our opinions only. This is a little bit about our project agenda. Uh, we are going to discuss about background, methods, results, implementation, and limitations today. And a little bit uh, overview of what is an autism-friendly hospital initiative. So it is a team-based approach to improve healthcare experiences of autistic individuals and their families. As we all know that individuals with autism have uh, various sensory and communication needs, which can make fast-paced and often overstimulating hospital environments pretty challenging. Therefore, to implement an autism-friendly initiative hospital, we need to focus on two domains. One is we need to address patients' needs such as sensory and communication preferences, visit preparation. And on, based on that, we need to develop an individualized care plan. And the number two domains is we need to address providers' barriers. We need to know about their knowledge gaps and whether they need any additional training. So based on our need of implementing an AFI, we developed our problem, hypothesis, and objectives. We know that there needs to be an improvement in delivering medical services for uh, autistic individuals, and we developed our hypothesis that if adequate training is offered, then confidence levels will be higher when delivering medical services. And our ultimate objective is to determine and address providers' gaps in knowledge and confidence managing. Since our project is today is only about providers' experience, we conducted some literature reviews to know what barriers they face so that we can improve on those to implement an autism-friendly initiative hospital. Now we will be talking about what, uh, what we found in, in those literature uh, reviews. So there was one literature review which was done uh, among 143 providers in the primary care clinic in Oregon and California, and they used an ASPAR survey tool with one page questionnaire with six new item on self-efficacy scale with uh, two items on how challenging and rewarding was it to provide care to autistic individuals and the seven items on provider characteristics. And they found that 25, only 25% 25 of providers were confident in communicating with the patients. And only 40% reported confidently doing physical exam, 40% reported accurately diagnosing and treating other medical issues, and 38% said that they helped patients stay calm and comfortable during their first visit. So the number is still low. And there was another literature review. Uh, there was another survey which was done on 309 medical students in three different universities in Palestine. And the survey question was developed on basis of a few factors. One is sociodemographic and academic details and how much knowledge they had and how much familiar they are with autism. And uh, the survey results were found that those who had prior training on autism scored higher on knowledge, familiarity, and confidence compared to those who did not receive any prior training. And there was another survey which was done on 922 providers, and they were asked about their autism training and experiences. And uh, most providers reported lacking skills and tools to care for this patient population. So therefore, based on our literature review, we, um, we found that providers mostly face these three barriers while delivering care for autistic individuals. One is lack of care coordination. The other one is lack of practice guideline and lack of provider education about autism spectrum disorder. We uh, followed this, uh, these steps. Uh, so we did our literature reviews first to know about uh, the provider's barrier. And then on based of on those literature reviews, we develop a survey uh, also with the help of our CQI team members. And then we circulate this survey to the primary care providers and we gather data and analyze it. So based on our literature review, we developed a survey um, in order to determine the needs and strategies to implement an autism-friendly initiative hospital by asking providers their perspective on caring for individuals with autism. 
So in our survey development, or in our survey, we asked two questions about whether or not they provide care for individuals with autism and how often. We asked three questions on um, assessing their confidence in prior training. One question was asked to identify their interest on further training. Two questions were asked to acquire feedback on how to implement an autism friendly initiative hospital. And um, lastly, two questions were, were asked regarding their demographics. So in our survey, we had 38 participants who were providers taking care of patients with autism in the Children's Surgery Center. And now that we talked about survey development, we can go into talking about um, the, da the data we gathered. So on our first few questions, um, among 38 respondents, 37 mentioned that they took care of patients with autism and 38.6% said they encountered these individuals often, which was considered um, more than once a week. In these questions, we asked about whether or not they received any training and how many hours they dedicated to that training. Um, we had 10 respondents say that they had prior training and only 7.9% said they received more than 10 hours of training. This data undermines the importance of providing formal training to the providers. In these questions, we asked about their confidence levels and further training they are interested in receiving. And we found that the majority of them were neither least confident nor most confident. Um, and however, majority of them, 21 out of the 38 respondents were very interested in getting further training. So we provided seven options in this question to, in order to know their preferences um, to help make an autism friendly hospital. And the first two options were rated the highest, which was providing support, consultations, and specific training. And the last two were rated the lowest, which was um, establishing a written autism friendly protocol. So based on our results, our hypothesis was answered. Um, and we can conclude that additional training, grand rounds, and easily accessible information such as communication preferences, sensory needs, and interests should be mentioned in EPIC for individuals with autism, um, and that this can improve confidence levels for, for providers in delivering services to autistic individuals. A limitation to our study was that um, our survey was conducted in the Children's Surgery Center, um, and our sample size was really small, given that we only had um, 38 participants. And we just want to thank um, the CQI team, Dr. Bibiana, Dr. Akins, Dr. Aubin, Dr. Kohler, and our mentors for providing constructive feedback to our survey development. The UC Davis Mind Institute was founded in 1998 with the promise to reduce and prevent the disabilities that can be associated with autism and other neurodevelopmental conditions. Every day, our clinicians and researchers make progress on that promise. Our groundbreaking research on autism, fragile X syndrome, chromosome 22Q11.2 deletion syndrome, ADHD, and other conditions associated with disability are helping affected individuals achieve their fullest potential. Please visit our website or our social media platforms to find out more about current studies, upcoming events, and how you can help make a difference.